hey what is going on guys welcome back to another video and this is the second video in a series that i've started that is building a users forum using post profile if you haven't checked out the first video i'll leave a link in the description as well as in the i button i highly recommend you first check that video out because in that video we try to create a basic setup and over the course of this project we are going to build up on that setup so before i move on to the code i just wanted to talk about the github repo and how is it set up for everybody who is trying to follow along so basically i'll leave a link to the github repo that i'm using for this project in the description of this video and every new video will have its own branch so at the time of recording this video i have two branches one is for the setup video other is for the user login which we'll try to achieve in this video so if you want to go back and take a look at the code at the end of a particular video how it looked like then you can actually check out each of these individual branches and you can see for yourself how the project evolved the main branch here will always be equivalent to the latest video by the time you see this video my video one user login and the main branch will be equivalent to each other so the objective of this video is to implement user login in PostgreSQL. we already have a couple of tables which take care of signing up a user so we have two tables accounts table and a user table and we already have a function called register user with which a user can sign up with his first name last name email address and password so we have already completed that uh, in the first video so now let's take a look at the login flow really quick so i have created a function here in postgres called login and this is a part of the public schema because that's the schema that postgres file is exposed to it takes in two things email and password and it returns a type of jwt so this is a user defined type meaning I have defined the JWT here and we'll take a look at the JWT type before we get into the code. And here I declare an account, which is from the users forum private because the accounts table contains the hash password for a particular user. Quickly, let's take a look at the JWT because that's what we are returning from here. So the JWT is a very simple Postgres type. So it has a role, it has expiry time so this is an integer value there is email and is admin so currently this is set to boolean and the default value for this is false as we kind of make progress uh, we'll change this value for admin the email is basically an identifier so every time a jwt is sent back to the backend to understand for which user action has to be performed we'll use the email from this jwt and the expiry is an important field to understand if the JWT has expired. And if so, we have to reissue a new JWT. The role is also important because with this, PostgreSQL file understands the role of the current logged in user and what things have we granted to that particular role. Now let's take a look at the role that I've created. So this is a very simple role called reg user. So we haven't granted anything to this role, but as we build a project, I'll start giving grants and access to this particular role to certain functions that we create because you want registered users access to certain things that anonymous users can't. So we'll extensively use the registered user role. Now let's get back to the login function. Now the login function is pretty simple. So we first try to select the account row for the particular email from the users forum private accounts table. And then if the account dot password is equal to that is the hashed password, if it is equal to crypt dollar two, which is the password and account dot password, if these two are equal, then we will return a JWT. And here the JWT has registered user as the first parameter. So this is the role. This is a way with which we define the expiration time. So here we say that from EPO, uh, we add an interval of 15 days, meaning that the issued JWT is valid for 15 days. After 15 days, PostgreSQL file will automatically understand that it is an invalid JWT and will return a 403. So you can actually put in any, in, any interval here, all the PostgreSQL supported intervals. So I have put in 15 days. This can be like 20 days, 30 days, or even if you want to go, like you can actually make it like 365 days as well. And then 
for an identifier we pass in account.email and then currently we are hard coding this value as false as we go ahead so this is the value which determines if the current user is an admin or not as we develop the project more this will change this won't be static anymore and then if the account.password doesn't match then we just return a null so this is a very straightforward simple function now there is one last thing that we need to do before we start the server and test the login function so let us go to the index.js file and there are two things that i have added here the jwt type identifier and the jwt secret now the jwt type identifier is equal to the type that we have created so for us it is users forum public dot jwt and a jwt secret so this can be any text so i just generated a random hex string and passed it here so this could this should probably come from your env file but for now i've just hard coded it to this but make sure you add these two. If you don't, then PostgreFile is not able to identify that you are actually trying to return a JWT. So if you try to write this mutation without passing the PG identifier, this will be treated just like a value and user and it will error out, right? So make sure that you also pass in these two things. So now let's take a look at the GraphQL and let's try to understand how we can use it inside of our front end. So I've already started my Node.js server at port 3000 and it's running here. So I've already created a couple of functions here. If you, if you have seen the last video, I've already created a registered register user mutation. So let's create a new user. So let's just call it test user five with password as test user and then uh, first name and last name. And then let's first register a user. Okay. So this actually, I already have a user with test user five. So let's make it nine and then register a user. So we have successfully registered. And now let's try to log in with this particular user. And voila, we have the JWT. So we can take this JWT and send it in the authorization header in the bearer schema. So that PostgreSQL file will do all the necessary things. It will try, it will extract the role from it. It will validate whether the JWT is expired or not. And it will also allow us to access the claims that have been defined in the JWT. Meaning we can access the email directly in a Postgres function because PostgreSQL file takes care of all of those things. Also, before, I, before we kind of sign off, I just wanted to let you know that a JWT isn't a secure token, meaning I can just take this value. I can go to base64decode.org, paste it here and decode this. And as you can see, I can pretty much see the contents of the JWT, right? So email test user nine expiration. This will be this timestamp will be 15 days from when I created it. Uh, and then you have the audience, which is the post graph file. You can change all of these things. One thing to remember is that a JWT isn't a secure way of storing things. So don't store passwords or sensitive information inside of your JWT. So yeah, I think that's going to be it. In the next video, we will try to create a post for a logged in user and we'll try to give access to the logged in user to certain resources. I hope you like this video, like, share, subscribe. And thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.